Good morning. We want to welcome you this morning to Living Waters Chapel. Those of you here in person, those of you watching online, would you stand with us? We want this to be a place of praise. If you want to put your hands together, you can too. Warm them up a little bit. Sing, let praise be a weapon. Praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. Come on, let praise arise in this place. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Let it rise. Let praise arise. Come on, let it rise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. song that overcomes the raging sea. Let faith be the song that calms the storm inside of me. Let it rise. Let faith arise. Come on, sing it out. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch our giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. Oh, oh. oh, take a moment this morning. Thank him for his goodness. Thank Him for who He is to you this morning. We join with all creation singing praise. We all sing together with all of heaven. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise You. We praise You. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch our giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. All creation cry, God, we praise you. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Give him praise this morning, for he is worthy. He is worthy. You are worthy, Lord. God, this morning we ask, let praise be our weapon. Let praise be our song. Let praise what we be what we use to overcome anything we're facing. In the midst of dark times, in the midst of difficult times, in the midst of our greatest days, in our worst days, you still deserve the praise. You are good, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Would you sing this with Aaron? Sing, you are good. You give life. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart.
as they continue to just keep playing through that. Pour out your praise on him. God, we give you the highest praise. Without lyrics on a screen, just begin to give God praise from your heart. Praise from your heart. Come on, just begin to praise him. Let him awaken praise in your soul. God, we give you the highest praise. beginning to end, you've been worthy. Thank you, Lord. Let's sing of his goodness. In the darkness we were waiting. In the darkness we were waiting. Without hope, without light. Till from heaven you came running. There was mercy in your eyes. To fulfill the law and prophets. To a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt. Sing praise, praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the
and to reconcile the lost, to redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side, knowing this was our salvation, Jesus for our sake. He is our hope. 
our one and only hope. You know, I said this a few months ago when the bowl, uh, the billboards first came out for the COVID vaccine. And like I said, no matter where you stand on the fence of whether you wanted the vaccine or not, there were billboards that came out that said, hope is here. But let's remember that our hope is greater than any vaccine. Our hope is greater than any politician. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. He gives hope. He gives life. God, we praise you and thank you for that this morning. God, thank you that we have the opportunity to come together to praise you as one church, as one body. We join with creation. We join with heaven and the song that has already been going on. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Oh, we give you praise. Amen and amen. God's good. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning and worshiping along. Remember, worship is more than just words on a screen, more than the songs that we sing. Worship is a lifestyle. It's us offering our whole self to Christ. This morning, we want to take the next few moments to just greet and welcome. So if you're okay with people in your space, you may remain standing. But if you're not okay with people in your space and you want them to wave from a distance, remain seated and we will do that. So begin to do that now. Greet and welcome one another. Those of you watching online, we're thankful that you have joined us as well. Bless the Lord. We just want to thank you and uh, welcome each and every one of you once again to our early worship service this morning at Living Waters Chapel. And if you are a first-time worshiper or it's been a long time since you have been here to worship with us, we want to extend a special greeting to you. We encourage you to find a Connect card. They are in the backs of the chair pockets. Uh, there'll be one near you somewhere and a pen. And just take a moment to fill that out here in our service this morning. And you can put that in the uh, uh, collection box, the giving boxes that are on either side of the, the sound booth area as you would leave the service this morning. But we thank you for being with us. As well, for any first-time uh, online viewers this morning, we welcome you to our worship service. And uh, we encourage you as well to respond. Call the office. Respond online. If uh, you have a special need or request, desire information about Living Waters Chapel, we'd be more than happy to get in contact with you. Uh, just to draw your attention to several of the announcements that are in our current bulletin, and again to our online audience, these things are posted on our website so you can get fuller detail there. But uh, next week is our 4th of July celebration, and so we are just encouraging you once again, if you have not signed up in some way to help, there are several opportunities to serve and to help and assist uh, with this event that we host every year here on our campus, church grounds. And so uh, please be aware of that and sign up before you leave 
uh, today or before this day is over if you're signing up online. And then again, you can serve and help us with our youth ministry. There's a, a Seek Week that is planned July 12th through the 17th, and there's a way that you could help with providing either meals or snacks or just uh, some funds to help underwrite those costs as uh, youth ministry has a special week of service and activity planned for the middle of July. And so again, we thank you for that uh, response uh, to helping and supporting that. And then our children's ministry, Kid Zone. Pastor Jeremiah has listed a number of areas uh, where we are looking for volunteers and where you could assist. And so we're going to encourage you again, look that over, uh, pray about it, and uh, uh, sign up and at least try something. And if it, it's not a good fit, uh, you'll know, uh, the staff will know, and we'll direct you in another direction maybe to serve and to, to be a part of ministry here, but from our nursery uh, through our elementary age uh, in children's ministry, if you'd like to be an assistant or to help in some way, uh, many hands make a light load, and so I know Pastor Jeremiah's team would welcome you. Uh, for that, there's a special community week uh, day camp that is planned in August, and they are always looking for extra help for that. So be aware of that. Have that on your calendar. Please sign up if you can help even in a small way with that. And then finally, our tech team is looking for volunteers. Uh, there's four areas that are listed here in our bulletin. Again, this is uh, something you can contact the church if you have more questions talk to Jer pastor jeremiah directly and uh, he can answer any questions you have about that but if you are one of those people who is saying i feel like i need to get involved or i wish i could do something the back side of our bulletin is full of opportunities and as i already said Try something and, and see if it's a good fit for you and something that you feel uh, fulfilled in and feel that it's a, an area where you could serve and uh, be a blessing to others, be a blessing to the Lord Jesus, and help the ministry of Living Waters Chapel move forward. So we want you to uh, feel a part and be a part of the ministry here from week to week. And finally, we just want to thank you for your kindness and faithfulness in giving unto the Lord. Again, whether you are giving uh, through our uh, giving boxes here for the in-person worship, if you're online and you're sending a check-in through the mail, giving online through our app or our website, however you are giving uh, the Lord's tithe and offerings, we are so appreciative of that and thankful. And uh, we pray God's richest blessings on you as you continue to serve him and stay faithful and true to the Lord this summer. God bless you. Pastor Chris is coming to share God's word. May we listen attentively to what God has for us today. Thank you, Pastor Rich, for sharing all of those uh, serve team opportunities. So if you are looking for something to do, uh, hopefully you'll take advantage of uh, trying out one of these uh, serve team opportunities. And uh, speaking of serve team, I just want to say a big Thank you to uh, any individual who had a hand in uh, helping uh, make uh, last uh, Sunday with our uh, pig roast and gathering for Father's Day a, a great time and a, a great success. So if you were uh, away on vacation, I'm sure you certainly uh, enjoyed, your, enjoyed yourself uh, with with that time on, on vacation, um, but if you were able to be with us uh, for that Father's Day celebration, we had a great time as well. This morning, I am going to be uh, taking a look at uh, uh, Living in the Spirit, and this is a, a new series that we're going to be uh, beginning, and we are going to uh, just be taking a look at this, some aspects of the Holy Spirit. And if you have been part of uh, Pastor Rich's teaching on uh, the class Living in the Spirit, you know that uh, this will uh, look a little bit familiar as well as we are uh, taking uh, the young adults through this uh, teaching as well. But I want to just highlight a few thoughts of uh, what the Holy Spirit is and our understanding of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, if I were to ask you the question, what is your understanding of the Holy Spirit or, or what knowledge do you have of the Holy Spirit, you would probably uh, have some, some different thoughts and some different ideas on, on what the, the Holy Spirit is and who the Holy Spirit is and, and what your concept of, of the Holy Spirit is. And, and for some of us who have grown up in, in church, we have 
um, maybe heard the Holy Spirit referred to as the Holy Ghost. Now that's an old, old time phrase, uh, Holy Ghost. For many of us, we, we hear and we think about the Holy Spirit. But when you have that idea and that connotation of, of that meaning, what, what, does, what does that mean and what does that conjure up in, in your mind? And, and for, for some of us, there might not be some, some, some good thoughts about, about ghosts and things Things like that, and that may just stir in our in our hearts and our minds some some negative some negative thoughts in, in view of the Holy Spirit. So as we begin to take a look at this, we're going to take a look at John chapter 16, verses 5 through 16. And you are going to notice that in this passage, Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as He. Referring to the Holy Spirit as a person. So let's begin to uh, take a look at these particular verses. I am going to read uh, this entire uh, passage in its entirety. Verses 5 through 16. These are the words of Jesus. Now I am going to Him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? Because I have said these things, you are filled with grief. But I tell you the truth. It is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt In regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. In regard to sin because men do not believe in me. In regard to righteousness because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And in regard to judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you. More than you can now bear. But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on His own. He will speak only what He hears. And He will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. In a little while you will see me no more. And then after a little while you will see me. So these particular, these particular verses describe the Holy Spirit as a He. Which means the Holy Spirit is a person. Maybe in, in, in times you have referred to the Holy Spirit as an it. Well, the Holy Spirit is a he, and it is uh, important for us to understand this particular truth and this particular principle. We know that the Holy Spirit is part of the Godhead. The Godhead being God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That means that they are three in one. And when we try to wrap our minds around that particular concept, I don't know about you, but for me it just kind of goes like, kind of one of those moments where we try to understand that. But it's important for us to realize and recognize who The Holy Spirit is and and that the Holy Spirit is part of that Godhead. The Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. So because the Holy Spirit is a person, that means that the Holy Spirit has personality traits. Just like each and every one of us has personality traits. We have an intellect and the Holy Spirit has an intellect. The Holy Spirit knows the thoughts of God. So the Holy Spirit has 
and intellect because the Holy Spirit knows the thoughts of God. The Holy Spirit also has feelings. We see in Scripture that the Holy Spirit can be grieved. Just like you and I have feelings, the Holy Spirit has feelings. The Holy Spirit also has a will. The Holy Spirit demonstrates His will by giving spiritual gifts. Each and every one of us has spiritual gifts. God has given each and every one of us spiritual gifts. And as we just shared just a few moments ago, as Pastor Rich was talking about the different types of serving opportunities. Using our spiritual gifts to serve is one of the things that that we can do. So the, the Holy Spirit gives gifts to people. There are actions. The Holy Spirit is active in our lives. And there is a list of 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 actions that are in your in your notes and in your your handout and I am not going to take the time to read each one of these verses of scripture if I did we would be here for quite some time but the the actions that that the holy spirit has are as follows he speaks he testifies he teaches he convicts he intercedes for us he guides us into truth and directs our steps. He reveals God's word to us. He can be tested. He can be lied to. He can be grieved. He can be resisted. And he can be insulted. So once again, as you develop your understanding of the Holy Spirit and as you study these passages and you expand your your knowledge of, of the Holy Spirit, you will see that these are actions that take place, that, that the Holy Spirit is active in our lives and can be seen throughout the Word of God. So as you and I grow, as you and I mature and develop in our Christian walk, as we, as we mature and grow in our development and our understanding of the Holy Spirit, we will begin to experience these things in our lives. And we will realize and we will recognize that the Holy Spirit plays an active part in our lives. And as we have an awareness of of what He is doing in our lives, we will gain a better understanding of the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, but when I when I read God's word, when I when I study God's word, and or if I'm listening to, to God's word and the Holy Spirit brings something new into my my heart, into my mind, I am excited about that because the Holy Spirit is speaking to me through the Word of God. The Holy Spirit is revealing things to me through the Word of God. And because of that, that means that I have that sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. As you see the Holy Spirit revealing things to you, the Holy Spirit showing things to you through the Word of God, through the Holy Spirit teaching you, you begin to experience a sensitivity to the Spirit of God. You see, as we, as we grow and as we mature in our faith and as we have a greater understanding of who the Holy Spirit is, we are not the same person that we used to be. And that means that we are growing in our relationship with the Lord. That means that we have less of the world in us and we have more of Jesus in us. And this is the Holy Spirit that is at work in us. And this is the Holy Spirit that is, that is drawing us to to have a stronger relationship with Jesus. We see that not only is the Holy Spirit a, a person, and not only does, 
Does the Holy Spirit have personality traits? But the Holy Spirit has the attributes of God. As we said just a few moments ago, we said that the Holy Spirit is part of that Godhead. The Holy Spirit is part of the the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And because of that, the Holy Spirit has the same qualities, the same attributes of God. We see that the Holy Spirit is eternal. And when you think of the word eternal, you think of forever. That means the Holy Spirit has always been forever. Another moment. How do, we, how do we wrap our minds around that? How do, we, how do we understand that? Well, for, the, for me, for the things of, of God that I don't completely, fully understand or, or can be able just to wrap my mind completely around it, I take it by faith. Why? Because I know God spoke it. God said it. It's in His Word. And because it's in His Word, I believe His Word. I know and I believe God to be trustworthy and true. So the Holy Spirit is eternal. The Holy Spirit is all-knowing. He knows things. All things. He's able to speak into our hearts. He's able to take the scripture and apply it to our hearts and our lives. The Holy Spirit is all powerful. See, for individuals who have a limited concept or a limited understanding of of who the Holy Spirit is, they may see the Holy Spirit just as some mystical, powerful force. They may see the the Holy Spirit or, or view the Holy Spirit as what we would see in a Disney movie, if you will, where I just Rub the lamp. Whoosh. Out comes the genie. Out comes the Holy Spirit as this powerful force. And well, you have three wishes. No, the Holy Spirit is so much more than that. Yes, the Holy Spirit is all-powerful. The Holy Spirit is powerful. But if we just limit the Holy Spirit to a, to a force or, or to something that we want to depend on, someone that we want to depend on when we need something, then our view of the Holy Spirit is faulty. Our view of the Holy Spirit is limited. So the Holy Spirit is all-powerful. We see as well that the Holy Spirit is present everywhere. Once again, present everywhere means everywhere. So where can we go To escape from God's presence. Where can we go to escape from the presence of the Holy Spirit? We can't go anywhere to escape the presence of God. To escape the presence of the Holy Spirit. So as you and I go about our day-to-day activities do we have an awareness of God's presence do we have an awareness 
of the Holy Spirit? Do we have an awareness of the Holy Spirit working in us and through us? Do we have an awareness of His power, of His presence? Or do we just go about our day-to-day activities with no recognition of God's presence, with no recognition of the power of God? You see, if we go about our day-to-day activities without a recognition of, of God's power and God's presence... we then begin to look at life as how we are doing life. How we are going through things. How, how we are doing life. It becomes all about us. It becomes all about what we are doing. But when you and I have an awareness of God's power and God's presence. It takes the focus off of us and it places the focus on Him. We realize that that He is ordering our steps. We realize that He is directing our steps. When we become aware of God's agenda versus our agenda, we begin to look at things differently. We begin to have a different perspective. We see that the Holy Spirit is involved in many things. The involvement of the Holy Spirit with the qualities and the characteristics and the attributes that we have looked at of the Holy Spirit we realize and recognize that the Holy Spirit is part of the process of creation when you look at creation and when you read the story Of creation. And you read phrases and see phrases like the Spirit was hovering. It reminds us that the Holy Spirit is part of that creation process. So that is a significant part that the Holy Spirit. It's part of that creation process. The Holy Spirit is also part of the process of salvation. When you and I trust Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit is part of that process. The Holy Spirit is the one who is drawing us or or wooing us. To accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit compels us. Just as you would say sometimes that maybe you are experiencing a a nudging inside of you. Or you might say, "As as I'm praying and as I'm talking to God, and as I'm reading Scripture, this this voice inside of me is is drawing me to, to Scripture. This voice inside of me is drawing me to do things for the Lord. And that is the drawing, that is the that is the wooing, that is the the prodding of the Holy Spirit. So we see that the Holy Spirit is 
an active part of salvation. We also see that the Holy Spirit plays an active role and an active part in Scripture. As you and I read and and study God's Word, do we read God's Word with a sense of expectation and a sense of wanting to learn and apply God's Word to our lives? Or do we, do we read God's Word as if we were reading a, a magazine or, or a newspaper? They are both words on a page. What makes the Word of God significant to us? What makes the Word of God meaningful to us? It is when the Spirit of God begins to illuminate and begins to show things to us that the Word of God becomes real, becomes alive, becomes meaningful to us. You see, the Word of God is is all these things. It's real, it's active, it's sharp, it's, it's God's Word. It's His truth. As it's been said, it's His love letter that is written to us. But what makes it so meaningful? What makes it so powerful to us? When we begin to read it and study it and apply it to our lives with with an open mind, the Holy Spirit begins to just make the Word of God come alive to us. We see that the Holy Spirit is involved in the resurrection from death. The Holy Spirit is part of of that process as well that brings us from death to life. Spiritual death to life. Physical death Death to life. Yes, we are all aware that unless Jesus returns before we breathe our last breath here on this earth, we will all face death. With that thought in mind, maybe you'll pray a little bit more earnestly for the rapture to happen. But we are all going to face death. A physical death. But it is only temporary. Amen. It is only temporary because the Spirit will bring us back to life. And then we will be reunited in heaven with Jesus, with with our loved ones. So the Holy Spirit is involved all throughout our lives. You think about our life. You think about Holy Spirit being part of creation, salvation, scripture, resurrection from death. And God's word refers to symbols of the Holy Spirit. As we study scripture, as we memorize scripture, Scripture, as we apply Scripture, the Word of God, to our lives, we will see that throughout God's Word, symbols of the Holy Spirit are represented through wind. We can see that passages that talk about the wind of the Spirit or or God breathing. Another symbol of the Holy Spirit is water. Think about the passages that that talk about water in reference to the Holy Spirit. And Jesus saying, 
If you're thirsty, come to me. You will not thirst again. Our name, Living Waters Chapel, comes from these particular verses in John chapter 1, verses 37 through 39. We also see that the, a seal is a representation, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Having something sealed in our hearts and sealed in our minds. The Holy Spirit is able to seal things in our hearts. Seal things in our minds. The Holy Spirit is also represented by oil. We know that the Holy Spirit is also represented as a dove. So I encourage you to take a look at these notes that have been provided for you. To take a look at these references of Scripture. And as you read these Scripture references, and as you study these references, and as you apply them to your Life, you will gain a greater understanding of the Holy Spirit. Who the Holy Spirit is, realizing that the Holy Spirit is a person. As I bring my thoughts to a close, our desire should be to have an experience with the Holy Spirit in our daily life. As we experience the Holy Spirit in our daily life, several things will occur. You see, the Holy Spirit creates unity among us. The Holy Spirit desires that we be united, that we be as one. Yes, we are, we have different personalities, we have different qualities and, and attributes about us physically, we have different giftings. But what can we be united on? The Holy Spirit wants to unite us. As we think about the past 12 to 18 months that we have journeyed through. We have heard so much about what divides us. The Holy Spirit working in us and through us and, the, and the, as we experience the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our daily lives he desires to create unity among us so rather than looking for what divides us look for what unites us how can we be united With people inside the church and out in our world. See, as followers of Jesus Christ, His desire is that we be united. The Holy Spirit taps potential in us. Each and every one of us has potential. Each and every one of us has giftings. Maybe for some of you, it took you quite some time to discover, to discover what your potential is within you, what your giftings are. But it is the Holy Spirit that taps that potential in us. It's the Holy Spirit that leads us deeper into God's Word. 
God's word is truth and life. And God's word must be part of our lives each and every day. We must be reading it, studying it, applying it to our lives. And finally, the Holy Spirit leads us out into the world. As we experience the the person of the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit in us, it's not so that we can just keep it to ourselves, but it is to make a difference in this world. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have sent us the Holy Spirit. Give us a greater understanding of who the Holy Spirit is. Draw us closer to you. May we have an awareness of your power and your presence working in us and through us. God, I ask that you would work in mighty and powerful ways in people's hearts and in people's lives. God, that you would draw them closer to you. God, that you would work in their hearts and in their lives spiritually, physically, relationally, emotionally, financially. God, that they would not lack anything, that their their trust and their hope and their confidence would be in you. So work in them and through them. I pray in Jesus' name. I pray this prayer a blessing over you. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Because of you, Jesus, and the hope of heaven, we believe and we know the best is yet to come. Amen. At this time, we are going to be saying goodbye to our online audience. Online audience, thank you for worshiping with us. We trust and believe that you will have a great week.